Greetings, folks, and welcome to the home of the Art Life Museum and Art Life Limited Editions for the past 22 years. Having been in the same studio and residence for such a period of time, it's been brought to my attention time and time again that the place is resembling more and more of a museum as time goes by. So today we're going to take a very brief tour of the tip of the iceberg so that uh, people will have an idea of some of the uh, work that has gone into Art Life Limited Editions over the years and the results of some of the byproducts of that work. Also an introduction to uh, the Art Life Museum which can be found on our website and is known as Art Life MOCA which is the Museum of Conceptual Art. In the corner of the entry room is one bookcase which has one cubbyhole assigned for each of the years of Art Life's publication. So each compartment contains 11 issues for that particular year spanning over a 25 year period. In 1980 before coming up with the idea for Art Life. I was uh, doing large-scale sculpture and models of proposals for large-scale sculpture while uh, simultaneously doing uh, high-tech product development for a firm in Santa Barbara. At the time I was doing balancing sculptures which you'll find all over the house and the studio because uh, even though I started doing those before Art Life in 1980, I continued to do them sporadically over the years. Uh, the reason uh, this one in the corner is dominant is because it was one of the earliest ones before the first issue of Art Life. And uh, what it was meant to be was a monument to space exploration with a tower uh, approximately the size of the Washington Monument, which would be wind-driven, uh, solar-powered, and generate electricity. So at that time, the best I could do was to make models of these things, so that uh, this is the model for that particular sculpture, which obviously was never brought to fruition. And the, uh, the small gentleman standing in the corner, tipping his hat to the monument, is just uh, there for scale so that you can see the actual size that the fin finished piece would be. And the balance beam with the planet Saturn on one end and uh, solar cells on the other is balanced atop of a simulation of the jet stream left behind by a rocket being launched into outer space. So this was a very important and seminal piece and uh, at some point in the future, it may even get larger than the model. The one behind it looks very delicate and very insignificant. However, it's uh, very much more than that since what's represented on both ends of the balance beam, which are hovering over the planet Earth, are two geosynchronous satellites spinning around the Earth, much as the present-day satellites that bring us most of our communications. So the speed of the satellites is timed perfectly with the rotation of the Earth, so that the satellites and the Earth are constantly rotating in the same path at the same speed, so for all intents and purposes, they're not moving. So after... Uh, doing these balancing things for quite some time, I got involved with some smaller models using different materials. And there are a couple of those here on the mantle. And you can see that uh, the concept is the same in all of them. It's just the materials that were used. Uh, this one is uh, another early one, one of my favorites, which is called Pirouette. Since the found object is delicately balanced and doing a ballet turn around the pivot point. 
the one in the front is a rib bone, which is meant to be far more primitive. And uh, that would correspond with the base that it's on. The, the next one is a full circle, which is far more stable since it's not only balanced but pierced at the same time. So this series was something that uh, started 30 years ago and as we'll see shortly has continued over the years and uh, probably uh, will continue with larger scale outdoor pieces now that I don't have my monthly deadline after 25 years. One of the things that uh, has been with Art Life for all of its uh, 25 years uh, and beyond is the Art Saves Lives motto, which uh, for the first uh, several years I used repeatedly on a life preserver to further illustrate uh, the concept. And there are probably a dozen of these life preservers in various uh, colors, shapes, sizes, and forms that have been uh, coast to coast in America several times and are always displayed at any of our shows. So since then, the slogan has been printed on every conceivable type of print material on the internet, on Facebook, t-shirts, jackets, you name it. It's uh, been disseminated as widely internationally as possible in the last 30 years. So that is something that uh, has always been a part of art life and always will be. Uh, the sculpture on the mantle below the life preserver is one of my simplest, but also I think one of uh, the ones I feel is uh, the most sublime of the assemblages that I've put together over the years. And generally, I will save the parts to these pieces for many, many years until I have the right combination to make a suitable statement. So this one uh, is a carved wooden frame around an oval ivory box. Inside the oval ivory box is some white sheepskin with a red chili pepper, and it has a pearl on the stem of the chili pepper. Uh, the title of the piece is a reclining nude, and uh, most obviously it is after Modigliani's version of the same subject. These are two of my favorite balancing pieces. Uh, the larger one is an illustration of the war on terrorism. And on the balance beam, on one end we have the symbol for Islam, and on the other we have the symbol for Christianity, which is the crucifix. However, on the back of the crucifix, you'll see that it is laminated with shredded US dollars. So the representation is Christianity backed by US dollars opposed to the copper clad technology of fundamentalist Islamic beliefs. So these two ideologies are endlessly weaving and bobbing and turning and never reaching any resolution, but always opposed to each other. And if we come down the minaret to the base of the sculpture, you'll see a very small scale model of the World Trade Center, which in the total picture is actually the smaller of the two problems. The large problem is the difference between Islam and Christianity and the World Trade Center is merely an illustration of the results of that. Next to this piece is a model for a large-scale public art sculpture once again, utilizing the Statue of Liberty, but on the balance beam above the, the Statue of Liberty are the words uh, freedom or death. And that is taken from uh, the title of Nikos Katsensaki's uh, novel, which is world famous, and for those not familiar with him, he is uh, the foremost author, 
contemporary author in modern Greece. And he's written several other important books, uh, including uh, The Last Temptation of Christ and the one known by most people, Zorba the Greek. So here we have freedom or death balanced on liberty, endlessly in motion.